everybody. <laughs> Hi. So um, I'm sorry, it's taking me a little while to get another video out and I'm way behind doing this one, but I have been doing some private dream interpretations that people have been sending me and oh my gosh, thank you for sharing your dreams with me. I pray that God is um, speaking um, some truth about what he has been wanting to show you through those. And I just, I appreciate it. It's been um, such a blessing to, to, to do that and, and fun to get to know um, all of you who have been speaking to me personally as well. So this um, on May 28th, so we're a little late on this one, uh, May 28th at 7.30 in the morning, I was woken up with this song. I've never had this song before. And the only lyrics I heard were, she'll be riding six white horses when she comes. And we know this song, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, da, 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 you know, the child thing. But the only part I heard was, she'll be riding six white horses when she comes. Um, and further down in one of the dreams that I wrote down underneath it, I had been clinging to the side of a cement wall, almost like a dam, you know, like where you're, I was like clinging to the top. I couldn't do something until the Holy Spirit came. This is all going to tie together um, and it's super cool. So let me tell you the research that I've done on this song. So first of all, of course, I looked up the song and it, it has some, um, uh, some people that would uh, criticize it. Uh, and you can do your research on that. But but really what I want to say is that it is originally um, derived from an African-American spiritual song called When the Chariot Comes. And this was something that they did working on the railroads. Um, so when they were working on the railroads, the foremans, I found this out while I was doing research, were actually chosen um, because of their singing ability. Because the, the foreman's ability to sing and lead these songs and lead these chants helped working conditions and people's ability to endure what they were doing on the railroad, um, which was, of course, physically laborious and um, all sorts of other things. And the connotation of When the Chariot Comes, which is the original African-American spiritual song um, from which she'll be writing, the, um, she'll be coming around the mountains, was drawn from. Let me read you the, um, the verses of this song. It would be sung to the same... Um, tune as she'll be coming around the mountain, but um, each verse is different. So here are the verses. Oh, who will drive the chariot when she comes? King Jesus, he'll be the driver when she comes. She'll be loaded with bright angels when she comes. She will neither rock nor totter when she comes. She will run so level and steady when she comes, and she will take us to the portals when she comes. Um, so that would be all of the the um, verses, but when he's, what they were singing about was this chariot. The idea of this chariot was linked to the rapture. Woo woo! Um, and who doesn't love to hear about the rapture these days? But um, the, the chariot was linked to, to the rapture and also underlying to their salvation from slavery um, because there were underground, um, there were underground, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, it's not the Underground Railroad, but that's what I'm talking about. But there were people who were working on saving folks from enslavement. Uh, and so there was the connotation of this chariot being the salvation of, of them from slavery and also um, to the rapture. And I just think that, um, especially the timing of it, and I looked up the date of, of course, George Floyd's um, murder. And I looked up the date and this would have been three days after it happened um, on the 28th, two or three days. I think it was the 25th that I saw. So the fact that I was given an, an African-American American spiritual song was incredible, that it's linked to the rapture and also to um, freedom from slavery. I thought that was super cool. Um, and now let's go back to the, um, she'll be riding six white horses. So here's what I pulled from that. Um, six white horses, okay? In Revelation chapter six, we talk, we, we hear about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Thought that was kind of cool. Um, and the first horse is white. Its rider is wearing a crown, or in the original Greek, you would say corona, and has a bow. And the bow, if it had no arrows, which there's no mention of the arrows, but maybe it's implied, but a bow without arrows would symbolize a bloodless victory. 
And do we know of anything Corona that, that wears a Corona and has a bloodless um, conquering of life? Well, might, might be some sort of virus. But um, I just thought that that was very interesting. Then the second horse in Revelation chapter 6 is the red horse. And that is um, the one that comes to take the peace from men on the earth. Read into that what you may, but first we had the corona and then we've had this situation where um, nation will rise against nation, it says, but the original Greek word for that is ethnos. So ethnos will rise against ethnos. Ethnicity will rise against ethnicity. Anybody here in some, I just think it's very interesting and in that there are no, there are no coincidences. So that's interesting. And then the next horse is the black horse. Um, and the black horse, the rider has a pair of scales. And it's basically a day's wages for um, a day, uh, for one meal. So to be able to eat, it will take you in a full day of work. This is speaking about inflation and famine. Um, and I'm just throwing that out there because I find it interesting. But another thing um, that I found out about riding six white horses, I always ask Jesus um, in the morning or the Holy Spirit when I wake up and I get these things and I know it's like, okay, that's got that's that's got to be God speaking loud and clear because that didn't come from me. I haven't heard that song in forever. Um, so I said, any scriptures with this? And I heard Zechariah. Now the Zechariah, I, I wrote down numbers because I always do and I always try to write down the numbers, but really um, the fact that I got anything at all was interesting. So Zechariah, um, and one of one of the women in one of my Bible studies talks of, uh, found this for me. In Zechariah chapter 6, there's actually mention of chariots. Get out. I believe there's four chariots, and they have different colored horses. Um, I just, I just find it fascinating. God is so cool. But I would encourage you to go read about the chariots um, in Zechariah and the, the vision that he saw. I would also encourage you to read Revelation chapter 6. Uh, read the whole book of Revelation like, like a child. Take no preconceived notion and just read it. Read it out loud um, if you want to because it says that there are extra um, blessings that come to those who not only keep these, the book of Revelation rotating through their heart, but read it aloud. Um, look into some of those things. Um, and then a last minute comment for um, those of us who are, well, the entire world right now is, is, is in the throes of upheaval from the, the murder of George Floyd. And I just wanna speak a little into that because I think we could use some perspective. Um, and for those of us who are not black or African American, um, as clearly I'm not, let me let me help illustrate um, I, I, like a, a metaphor that I feel God has brought into this situation that helps me um, in trying to reach out and relate um, and and bring unity from this situation where it's so easy to fall into the hate and throw up your hands and um, and spiral. So um, let's say um, for, for, for all purposes that this is not an actual true story of my life, but let's say um, in my early life that I was an abused child. I'm not, but let's say as a child or as a young person, I was abused in some way. We can all agree that abuse of, of children is, um, is, is not justice. That's, it, that is an injustice. That would be a part of my story for the rest of my life. Regardless um, whether they have cracked down and things are safer for children in the world, whether it becomes um, a matter of um, that, that case or maybe that person was put in jail, regardless of that, that occurrence, what happened to me would be part of my story for the rest of my life. Now, how I choose to deal with that story would be up to, well, of course, it's up to the individual. But if you were somebody who had not been abused as a child, you could recognize that that was injustice. You could recognize that that was awful. And you could listen to my pain and as a human being, understand where the hurt comes from. 
And I'm what I'm asking for some of us to do, especially those of us who aren't black, because there's there's no way that I, as a as a white female, I'm going to be able to identify with some of the racial struggles that have happened to people of color in the United States of America. And at the same time, even though I cannot personally relate, I can absolutely listen. And I can absolutely um, understand that as part of their story, we need to sit down at the table. And I, I don't know what you have been doing in your personal life. I personally find social media outlets like Facebook, and I don't really have an Instagram, but Instagram and things like that are useless. They're, they're useless forms of communication of anything but di division. Um, and so in my personal life, what I have been doing is um, reaching out to the friends and the family members I have that are black and, and that I love dearly and um, just, trying to, um, just trying to reach out to them personally because hopefully they already know I love them. But at the same time, it's, it, it doesn't hurt anybody to go one step further and say, you know, I love you. And thanks for being a person in my life that I love. And it, I, I don't know what else to say, but I just want to let you know if you need an ear to talk to, I'm around. You probably got other people you could talk to who are better, but I love you the end. So um, I, don't, I don't know what kind of solutions God has given you for this time um, and for the people in your life who are greatly affected by this. But the key to remember is that as Christians and as people who walk by faith and not by sight, to remember that everybody has a story and pieces of that story have made each individual who they are, whether you suffered from something as a child that has um, greatly influenced how you turned out as an adult, whether you experienced something as an adult that influences how you walk today. We are shaped by our experiences, but hopefully if we have the word of God, we are shaped more by the word of God and we allow the word of God to speak to our experiences um, and, and, and we can filter ourselves and what we've gone through, um, through his word and also be compassionate. You've got to have compassion and love. Jesus was so compassionate. And I'm reminded, I, I was listening to a talk earlier today and somebody brought up the story of the woman at the well and they were talking about the personality of God and Jesus basically called out this woman for something she could have been stoned for. And she let down her guard because she could feel that Jesus valued who she was. If she had admitted that, um, it, her admitting that to Jesus would be like admitting that she was um, worthy of stoning, basically, that it would have given the, the culture the right to stone her to death. And she willfully says, how do you know this? Like, and, um, but the personality of God, the, the warmth and the compassion of God so disarmed and enveloped her that she went back to the town in awe of who Jesus was. And I, I want each and every person in Christ, regardless of color or background or, um, experience to remember that God is always working in each individual's life on their experiences and that this is a time to rally around people who are struggling with what they're experiencing. It might be bringing up memories. It might be bringing up um, fears that they had as children. Um, it might be bringing up actual life circumstances that happened to them and affected, affected them. And it's time to be compassionate. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt you at all to be compassionate. Um, anyway, that's enough, but I, Dearly love you all, and I hope that you're doing well. And I'm going to get some work done while I'm still here at the office. 